Friends, do you know what Jesus Christ said to Pontius? To, to Pontius? You know what he said to Pilate? Jesus Christ said, Pilate, I'm a UFO. I'm a flying saucer. I am an alien from outer space. That's what Jesus said. He said, Pilate, I'm not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world, and I am not of this world. You see, Jesus Christ said to his disciples, he says, he says, I go to prepare a place for you, so that where I am, there, you will be with me also. I'm going to heaven. That's where I'm going. You know, God said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, that God created the heavens and the earth. And then what God did is God separated the waters from the waters. He separated heaven and he separated earth. And he made an expanse. That's the universe. It is it is the uh, the, the span of his hand. Okay. And it's continually increasing and growing all the time. And so he divided the waters from the waters. You see? And so God is sitting on his throne in heaven. And God is a patriot of his throne. He's not a patriot of the things of the world or of a nation. God is a patriot of his throne, of his resolve. You see? of his kingship and the kingdom of Jesus Christ is the entire universe, the entire creation. That's his kingdom. The kingship, the, uh, the, king, the kingdom of God is the entire creation. He created all things. And God requires us to conform to that kingdom, to the king who's ruling in that kingdom. You see, we have to conform and, 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 you know, people don't like that. They don't like it at all. Gosh, nobody wants to conform. They roll up their windows. They say, I, I'm not conforming to God. God has to conform to me. Is that right? You know, friends, you are not God. You are not God. You cannot save yourself. You are going to die. And you are going to die. The reality is that we have to conform to God. God's not going to conform to us. That's the reality. That's the reality. You have to be what God declares for you to be. God is ruling with a rod of iron. The resolve of God never changes. Okay? God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God doesn't change for anybody. God says, my glory, I give to nobody else. I am God, and there is no other. I declare the end from the beginning, from ancient times, the things that have not yet been done. I declare them to you before they happen. And there is no other God aside from me, a righteous Savior. Nobody can stay my hand. I have purpose. I will do my good pleasure. And nobody can thwart me. Nobody can stop me from doing what I pleasure to, my pleasure is to do. And the pleasure that God has is to destroy all his enemies. All those who are warring and waging war against God. The pleasure of God is to destroy his enemies. That's his pleasure. And to restore the creation. You see, God is a disciplinarian. He's a, dis he's a disciplinarian. Okay? The Bible says that God disciplines everybody he receives. He will chastise you. He's going to baptize you with holy fire. Many different baptisms. Hopefully one at a time. A little baptism here and a little baptism there. The refiner's fire, the hell fire, is the baptism all at once. You don't want that. That's too much. That is a discipline. God says that there's a narrow road and there's a wide road. There's an easy way and there's a hard way. Either way, he says, I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter what you say or what you do. I am God. I own it. I'm the brass. Okay? I never die. I live forever. I'm God. I, I created you. You see? So, so that that was formed, say to that who formed it, that you don't know what you're doing? 
you know, shall the, the, the potter, we say the potter, the, the, that, 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 you know, why have you made me thus? Or what are you doing? Why have you formed me this way? God is the ultimate authority. And we have to succumb to God. We have to conform to God. God's not going to conform to us. And we have to humble our hearts. And we have to seek God. And we have to find out what He wants. We have to seek Him. You know, I find that challenging is something that the body of believers do not want to hear. They don't want to hear that they're sinners. Well, my friends, everyone is sin and fall short of the glory of God. God bless you, sister. God bless you. And, 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 and God wants to bless you. God wants to impart in you a spiritual gift. You know, God wants you to, to, to be filled with His Holy Spirit, be filled with light and truth and peace and goodness and joy and love and peace and all the fruits of the Spirit. You know, kindness and faithfulness to God and patience and long-suffering and faithfulness and gentleness and kindness and meekness. All the good fruits of the Spirit. And that takes some burning at times. That sometimes takes, you know, us through a, through a trial through life in order to conform to those things. You see? Because we have to work our, our salvation, says the Bible. We have to work our salvation with fear and trembling. You know, when God loves someone, God inspires them to fear Him. To understand that there is a judgment. And that we have to continue in the narrow road every day. You know, we have to uh, acknowledge God every single day and leave uh, the elemental uh, things of this world that are not of God. We have to leave them behind. You know, we have to say no to all things that do not please God. We have to say no to sin and death. You know, we cannot continue in our sins, in our trespasses. Uh, we cannot continue in disbelief. We cannot continue, you know, in uh, debauchery, in lasciviousness, in the things of this world. Because the things of this world is enmity against God. You know, the world is, is, is the world that killed and murdered Jesus Christ, the sins that are in the world. And Jesus says that His kingdom is not in this world. He's in a different kingdom. His kingdom and his kingship is based on the righteousness of God. Okay, the throne of God, the kingship of God is based on righteousness, says the Proverbs. When, when the king is righteous, then all the people are righteous also. You see, we have to conform to God. We have to be righteous. And righteousness dwelling in us, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Lord, our righteousness. And the righteousness of God is the Holy Spirit living in us. People ask and say, well, what is righteousness? What is it? Righteousness is the Holy Spirit of God living in us. Then we're righteous. We are righteous before God when we speak the oracles of God. When God is speaking through us, then we are righteous before God. But when we are in our own righteousness, manifesting our own thoughts, and our own carnality, our own thoughts, you see, are flawed. We are flawed in people. We are, we are fragmented. Okay, there, there's a spirit, there's the birds of the air, the wicked spirits of, of Satan and devil that corrupts communication. We have to have the protection of the Holy Spirit in order to, for the Holy Spirit to speak through us, in order to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. For God has commanded the light to shine through the darkness. Therefore, let your light shine before all men. That's what God wants us to do. But we can't do anything without God. God says, without me, you can do nothing. I have to dwell in you. You have to let me in. You have to open the door. You have to open your heart to the love of God. So God can go to work in you in order to prepare you for eternal translation.
of all eternity to prepare you for the kingdom of His Son, Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 8, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when the Holy Spirit is in us, there is no condemnation. The peace of God, God Himself is living in us. We are righteous before God. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and that's the law of the Spirit. The law of the Spirit is for the Holy Spirit to be in us. The law of the Holy Spirit is for Himself to dwell in us. And that life is the Holy Spirit in us. Christ Jesus has set me free through that law from the law of sin and death. And the law of sin and death was the law of Moses. That law brought in death. Because there was no salvation, there was no way that they were able to do that law. Because they didn't know how. They had no righteousness in them. They did not have a perpetual covenant as we do today of the Holy Spirit living in us perpetually all the time. This was just a covenant of atonement. It was temporary until the body, the perfect body of Messiah, was, was, was to be birthed. After Messiah was birthed, the perfect natural body of this natural selection covenant came to an end after the birth of the perfect, non-fragmented physical body of Messiah. Then he made a new covenant. A covenant of spirit, of spiritual blood, a covenant of soul of Jesus Christ, of the Holy Spirit. And that spirit is the thread for all humanity, for all life. It's the thread of life. That's the only spirit that will bring us into and translate us into eternal life. And that spirit must abide in us, the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ. The verse 3 says, For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. You see? Because it was based on natural selection. The flesh is what weakened the law of Moses. There was no Holy Spirit intervening inside the temples of humanity as we have today. You see, we have a much better covenant today. And so we must forsake our flesh and, and, and receive the Holy Spirit and become spiritual. It, it is a spiritual selection, a spiritual election. It's no longer a natural and physical election. That's the difference. It's extremely important to understand. Now, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Jesus Christ came in the likeness of sinful flesh because his flesh was, was not fragmented. His flesh was perfect and he is the only man in the history of creation not to be fragmented. The only man in the history of creation that was perfect in his flesh. Imagine, imagine walking with Jesus Christ. Imagine. A, a perfect human being. It's amazing. Amazing. God is awesome. In order, verse 4 says, in order that the just requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us, not walk, who, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You see? So now, we can fulfill all the requirements of that law. But we, we, we fulfill You see, spiritually, in our hearts, that's where God dwells. And that's our righteousness. That's where God is. He's in the secret place. God bless you. Jesus loves you. God dwells in us. And He loves us and He wants to increase us day by day. In verse 5, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. We have to set our minds in Jesus Christ. To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. 
It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. God bless you, brother. My hands are freezing. God bless you. Thank you. Mine are freezing. Yeah, I'm getting out of mine. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It warmed out. Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you in Christ. God bless you. Thank you for stopping. All right, so, in verse 9 says, But you are not of the flesh. See, so speaking to those who have received the Holy Spirit. He says, you're not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness. And that's the thread line. That's our transcendency. That's how we're going to get into heaven. Through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Receiving the thread of life. That one spirit. You see the Bible says there's one spirit. There's one Lord. There's one baptism. There's one name given under heaven in which we are to be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. The name above all names says the Bible. Because he was obedient to death. Even death on the cross. And he was, his stature was perfect. He was unblemished. A perfect man. No fragmentation. And that offering became propitiation, not atonement, for all humanity. The covenant is open for all humanity, all nations, all languages, all religions, everybody. All those who acknowledge the love of the cross. God says, I, I'm offering you eternal security right now. Say yes to the love of Jesus Christ. Give him a grain offering with your heart and say yes, that's a good love. I, I want that love. I wish I could do that love and I want that love in my life. And God will bless you. You agree with that love. God is looking in your conscience. He's looking in your heart. And He wants you to be in agreement with Him. You know, the act of the cross of Christ was and is the greatest act of love in the history of the creation. Greatest act of love. And that's what God wants us to do. God says, I leave you two commandments and you can do all the commandments of the, of the Torah. 613 laws. You can do them with two laws. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor as you love yourself. This fulfills all the laws and the prophets. You know, if your neighbor was, was walking in sin, you know, you'd want to tell them. You know, if your, your neighbor's house is burning down, you'd want to go tell them because you, you'd want them to tell you that. You see? And so we're good Samaritans. You know, we love our neighbors. And how do we do that? You know, my friends, we cannot do proper love unless the Holy Spirit is in us. God will show us how to love. God will bring that love. He will put that love in us. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says that love, it will manifest outwardly through our flesh. Only God can do that. Only God. We can do a good love. A, a love that pleases God. God bless you, brother. Jesus loves you. We can. And God will bless us for that. But we have to have His Holy Spirit in order to attain eternal life. We must conform to the image of Christ in the way He so desires for us as individuals. Because the kingdom of God is based on being in the image, the likeness of the glorification of Christ. He was the only one who was glorified. He's the firstborn of the dead, says the Bible. The first one to be glorified in the creation from the flesh. And we have to follow that glorification. And that glorification makes us, uh, translates us, gives us uh, that translation, uh, eternal life, the spiritual body for all eternity. And that's going to be the, uh, the creation restored and perfected for all eternity. Sin and death wiped out. Okay, that's what Jesus Christ also came to do. It says here in 11, says, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit which dwells in you. So there's the glorification. The Bible says if, if, if we share in a likeness of the death of Jesus, it is appointed for everyone to die.
died, then we will also share in the likeness of his resurrection. And these things hold to be evident and true. The Bible says that we have this treasure living in earthen vessels. And the treasure living in earthen vessels is the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, living in us. That's the treasure. And God says to store up your treasure in heaven. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Store in treasure where moth and, and rust does not come and, dis and destroy. Where, where thieves do not come in to steal. And what is the treasure? The treasure is to, is to speak the fruits of the Spirit. To have the Holy Spirit in us speaking. To be the light of the world to be an example, to be a light, to be a reflection of the light of Jesus Christ. You see, that's the fruits of the Spirit, is, is, is love and righteousness and, and truth and patience and long-suffering and, and loving kindness and meekness and gentle, gentleness before man. You see, God said, let your light shine before man. Be, be an ambassador for God. Get on the altar. Present yourself an offering to God. A living sacrifice to God. God says in Malachi 10, verse 3, and 11, uh, 3 verse 10 and 11, He says, Bring all the tithes of the storehouse to God to me. Bring them to me. Your flesh, your spirit, and your soul. Bring it all. And see if I will not pour out such an abundant blessing over you that your cup will overflow, and I will rebuke the devourer for you. That's sin and death. He'll rebuke that for you. And he says, test me in all these things. He says, when you seek me with all your heart and all your mind, all your strength, he says, there you're going to find me. You'll find me. He says, go in your room. Go in, that, in your place. You know, go in, and in that place, close your door in that secret place and pray to your heavenly Father. And there he will hear you. Ask him for all types of things, prayers, supplications, all things. Petitions are yours. And, and, and he will reveal himself to you. The Bible says to come and taste that the Lord is good. Come to the cross. Receive prayer. Repent your sins. And God will, God will manifest himself to you. You will feel God. God will make you feel him. You will be brought to righteousness. You will be brought to righteousness. That's what God wants. God wants to get to know you. God says, I am knocking at your door. He says, answer the door. Anybody who answers the door, I will come in to them and they will come in to me. And we will stuff together. You see? The Bible says, Jesus Christ said, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God bless you. And, and you know, don't be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Oh, my people, for it is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid in the world. Jesus Christ said, I have overcome the world. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Do not be afraid, oh my little flock. Do not be afraid. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God bless you. Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ is calling you to repentance. He's calling you to a greater level of fellowship with him also. We go from glory to glory. From one glory to another glory. We increase day by day, little at a time. And we get stronger and straight in the resolve, the mind, the heart, and the love of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Father God, I pray for all the people that heard here today. I ask, Lord God, that uh, with, with a seed that's been sown, you're going to draw them closer and you're going to bless them even even more when they meditate on your name on the name of Jesus Christ the real God, the true salvation the real light that came into the world Father God bless them and keep them in your name your name is true your name is Jesus Christ Amen and Amen and to your glory, Lord Jesus, and for your glory. For all things were created through you, all 
things were created for you. You are the master creator. You are the one who conforms us. You create us. We are workmanship in God, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, Lord God. And that, Father, is the requirement, your, your good pleasure and the requirement for us to do. Father, I pray, I pray to be able to do that in the fullness of the desire that you have for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I beg and pray. Amen and amen. Amen.